Welcome to Eco Air Flight 13760 to Edinburgh. We'll be travelling at approximately uh, zero feet with a cruising speed of Kira. as fast as we can. Estimated journey time hey. is uh, about five weeks. Welcome to the Scrap Heap Challenge Final, where our two top teams face another epic build to decide who wins this, the coveted Scrap Heap Champions Cup. And this week, we've got a seriously heavyweight challenge. Our teams must make tugs capable of towing this massive 747 jumbo jet. It'll be no mean feat to get moving, as it weighs a hefty 155 tonnes. But it's time we got rolling and met the teams who made it all the way through to the final. Returning to the heat are a team of Blackpool's balmiest bikers. These bad boys of the north love life in the fabrication fast lane. Leader of the pack is Captain Coxie. And he's ably assisted by his mechanically minded scavengers, Grobo and Tony. Welcome back, the Dark Riders. Also ready for battle are a team of military vehicle enthusiasts from deepest, darkest Berkshire. Having spent years playing with big boys' toys, the Scrap Heap is a natural fit for these heavyweight heroes. They're led by Captain Bob, who dishes out orders to loyal scavengers Paul and Check. Tension! It's the Rusty Regiment! Welcome, finalists. Now, you'll need to punch above your weight to be crowned champions of the heap because this week's challenge is a colossus. We want you to build machines capable of pulling a jumbo jet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't weigh heavy on your hearts as you've just 10 hours to build your talky land tugs. Get hauling on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, teams. Wait for it. Steady, steady. Jumbo jet, eh? Tugging a jumbo jet. Any ideas? Big. Heavy. Plenty of weight. Plenty of weight's going to give us traction in it. Chuffing great engine. We need something with it with low enough gearing because the problem's going to be getting it started. There's going to be a big axle on that, isn't it? As much weight as we can get. I'm all right for about ten times like that. <laughs> <laughs> as you'd expect, our finalists are brimming with ideas. But to keep them on the straight and narrow, we've brought in two scrap heap regulars who live for heavy haulage. Hoping to bring some discipline to the rusty regiment is a scrap heap veteran who's bodging knows no bounds. Petrol, diesel or steam, he doesn't care. The man's magic hand should make light work of this heavy metal challenge. A warm welcome back for Richard Turbo Vincent. So what have you guys been thinking then? We're thinking big engine, Correct. talky, yep. um, low gear to start off with. Yep. Very Heavy. low gear, all Very the way. Low gear. Yep. Well, we want to get a bit of speed up. I we want to get a bit can. of speed up, don't we? So what do we want That's then, a big engine? Yeah. yeah. I thought about an aircraft tugger. Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't think you're going to be quite that lucky, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Probably we're going to have to make our own aircraft tugger. Yeah. yeah. Now, what Try. about going along this road, little wheels on the back which steer, big wheels, big engine. Big, big, big engine. Very big engine. Indeed. Yeah, and then we can put a big tank on here or something, a big diesel tank, and fill him up with water, mm. hitch on the back. There we go. The Rusty Regiment's plan is to keep things super simple. They hope to find a weighty chassis and add a powerful engine and tons of ballast. That should give them plenty of traction and heaps of horsepower. But if they don't get the gearing right, they'll never leave the start line. It's just got to be a big chef and heavy thing that'll pull 155. Superb. Yeah. Helping the dark riders move from two wheels to four is a truck mechanic and master of all things motorised. He's got a pedigree past on the scrap heap where he excelled in both land and water challenges, so pulling that jumbo should be no sweat for this season pro. He's Steve Matthews. What ideas you got there? Well, obviously, we need something with a lot of weight, a lot of torque, a lot of weight to get the, get the traction. Some big, meaty engine, 
reduction gear down. There's three things, weight, torque, reduction gearing. That's you right, know, you've got it on there. What have like you got that. there? Just one drive axle? Yeah. Well, that's all we concentrate. I mean, obviously, we're going to need <laughs> some but... What if we go for two drive axles? If you go four-wheel drive, you've got the front axle under the engine. So he's got weight already. Weight on there. yeah. And the back axle, you have to ballast up. <laughs> Say this is your, your, your drive wheels, then. We get another axle, tip him sideways, and we put an angle drive on the top, and then off your end there into your diffs here. The Dark Riders plan to convert a two-wheel drive lorry into a 4x4. They'll connect front and back axles using a third axle, mounted lengthways. This will give them lots more traction. But with a mass of drive connections needed, it's a risky plan. One week weld and it's all over. Whatever truck you can find out there, I'm still with the engine in because we won't have time to be swapping engines. No. no. So what do we need? Big engine. We want lots of prop shafts. Big heavy weights. A steel box for some ballast. Rock on beauty. Go. Fly. Avante. All right, let's go and get it up. Tooled from tat they may be, but they better have torque because they're going to haul a 155 tonne jumbo jet. And if that wasn't pressure enough, there's the Scrap Heap Champions Cup at stake. Military vehicle enthusiasts, the Rusty Regiment and their expert Turbo want to use a heavy chassis, giving them plenty of grip, and then shoehorn in a powerful engine, hopefully giving their two-wheel drive design a top speed advantage. As much weight as we can get. I'm all right for about 10 times of that. <laughs> Blackpool-based bikers, the Dark Riders, and expert Steve Matthews are also thinking big. They want to turn a normal lorry into a 4x4, hoping that the extra traction will make that jumbo fly off the start line. This is the final showdown, so the pressure's really on the scavengers to come up with the goods. I'll go and get the tape measure, shall I? Please. Yeah. And it's those fleet-footed dark riders who score first with this old horse lorry that's been rusting away on the heap for years. Cut size of this. This is the boy, boy. But it's big enough, isn't it? I think it's going to be one of the things, though, isn't it? Yeah. We could get this running. Hey, Grubbo Tony, what are you doing out there, lads? You know, we could do with some stuff back here. We think we found a 10 ton cargo. Oh, a cargo well, you made Steve's day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it looks just the job. Yeah, well, get it back here. Get, get some up back here. We need to be doing something. All right, mate. There's a map in case we get lost. But the Rusty Regiment also have their eyes on some hefty horsepower. What sort of an engine is it? Is it, is it a Perkins, is it? It's some sort of Gert diesel, it's isn't a V8. it? It's a V8 Perkins it's a... and it is large. Paul. Yes, Bob, I found a V8 with a box. It looks like it's been bashed about a bit, but it's all here. Bring it on. Bring it on home, boys. OK, we we'll have to get something to lift it because it's too much for me to carry. Oh, come on, <laughs> we'll put your back into it, man. Come on, let's have a go at it. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to hurt. Sadly, Czech's superhuman powers seem to have temporarily deserted him. Hmm. It's even got a nail in it. It just needs a, a, knock a in. knocking stick. But there's better luck for the Dark Riders with their thoroughbred find. Its working engine and decent chassis makes them early favourites. Well, how many horses it's got under the bonnet, that's amazing. Yeah. Thing. Not going to go in. Yeah. Bring it on in. With the lorry back in record time, it looks like the boys are determined to keep up the pace they set in their previous challenges. The Dark Riders used their motorbike know-how to great effect when we asked them to make a sand racing 4x4. What a good start! Working at full throttle, the Blackpool bikers turned out a perfect dune basher. Even finding time to psych out their opponents for the trial run. The competition doesn't start till tomorrow. <laughs> and when it came to the real thing, their nimble machine made short work of the sand traps, blasting them into the semi finals. Yes! <laughs> Motorbikes and snow don't usually mix, but that didn't stop the lads sneaking one into their snow shifting machine. Mounted on the front of a 4x4, it was used to power a giant snow-munching fan. 
both teams struggled to conquer the slopes on test day, but the Dark Riders machine did just enough to carry them into the final. The Dark Riders! Yeah! But how will the lads cope with their biggest challenge yet? If I pull this and you push that... Right, it oh, should... It. I think it should... It's got it's got moving. Oh, 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 Where's oh, it going to go? Oh, oh, keep, oh, going, oh, keep going, oh, keep going, oh, keep going. Keep going. That's him. It's locked. Locks in. Is that in? I got it. Very nice. Look at the size of this thing. It suddenly looks a lot bigger once it's in here, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it does, yeah. Big, hefty fella. The engine sounds good, so, nice. uh, so that's a good start. What's the step-by-step -step process from now on? Well, basically, we've got to get the gearing right down. We've got a 130 horsepower engine here. Uh, we've got to get as maximum torque out of that, so as low a ratio. We might end up using that drive axle, but right. we're certainly going to swap the steer axle, so the steer axle drives as well. So you, got, you get four-wheel effectively? Four-wheel four four drive, yeah. We're thinking of using an axle uh, long, long ways on. That'll give us an extra four to one ratio. Oh, what, well, you put an axle in that way? In that way, yeah. yeah. Right. In the yeah. middle. And then take the drive. Confused? The Don't be. The boy's clever design should kill two birds with one stone. The dark riders want to swap the front axle from their two wheel drive lorry for the driven axle from another vehicle. They'll transfer power through a 90 degree box to a third axle, which will give them four wheel drive, increasing traction. The third axle's added bonus is that its differential acts as a second gearbox, reducing their gear ratio and vastly improving the torque, or turning force, at the wheels. We've got plenty of weight under the steer axle with the engine, and then yeah. it's just a matter of ballasting down so the So then back. you'll then yeah. put more weight on that. Will you leave the, the length back. of the chassis as it is, or you might... We'll see. We might chop it. We yeah. might chop it. It depends on the length of the axle and drivetrain. Yeah. Right. Then we've got to get something substantial on the back to, to hook up yeah. To, uh, yeah. to this little plane. Yes, because you don't <laughs> want it. Yes, that would be embarrassing if your hook broke off. <laughs> it would, slightly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So while the dark riders gallop ahead with their horse lorry, the rusty regiment are left wondering what's happened to their AWOL foot soldiers. It's the worst bit, isn't it? It's the worst bit. Worst bit. Absolutely. Waiting for something to happen. Do you think he's going to sleep down there, Bob? Oh, he's always going to sleep down there. Wake him up then, for Christ's sake. I should go down there and kick his feet nowhere. But they needn't worry. Paul and Czech are alive and well. Engine, engine, engine. They've abandoned that beefy V8 for now, and they're on the hunt for a weighty chassis. That'd work. That looks very heavy, doesn't it? And just like their opponents, they've stumbled across a piece of scrap heap history. The destroyers used the forklift's engine and hydraulic pump to power through our warship mega challenge. Lorry wheels will fit straight on yeah. that. That's the nice thing and now another set of scavengers are circling its carcass, determined to cram in a monster V8. A daunting task for most, but handling heavy equipment holds no fear for these boys. Military vehicle nuts, the Rusty Regiment, had to put aside their usual mode of transport when we asked them to build a powerboat. Poor boys, keep it up. The lads had their ups and downs during the scavenge, but it all came together in the end thanks to their back-to-basics design. That'll be just dandy. Wet feet. I wonder if we've got any wellies handy. And what a design it was. I think there's actually a scrap-built powerboat on the plane. Powered by a beefy V6 hearse engine, they absolutely barreled along, breaking scrap heap speed records and leaving the opposition floundering in their wake. <laughs> Next up, the lads faced our deep sea treasure hunt with a new scavenger, Check. <laughs> the build was going well until Captain Bob burnt his hand. How? And they struggled to overcome this setback. Three, two, one. But on test day, their brave, or is that insane, expert donned their scrappy air-fed diving helmet and made short work of the salvage. Come on, Rusty Regiment! Don the The boys are on a roll. Rusty Regiment! But can they make it three out of three? Two foot six. That engine will, I reckon, squeeze in there nicely. Ah, oh, morning, guys. What yes. have you got, then? What have you got? Oh. Forklift truck. You're going to lift the 747 and carry it? That's yeah, right. sideways. <laughs> it might dent it a bit. <laughs> this machine weighs five ton, seven ton, somewhere near that. Wow. And the more weight we can oh, so get... you want the weight, yes. With yes. the more weight, because we've got to pull uh, 150 tons, you've got no. to have a great big, as much weight as possible. But do you think you'll add more than that? As much as possible. Right, so if you're like 10 tonnes, you're happy? I'd like more. That forklift's massive seven tonne weight is going to make it tough to get back to their build bay. All right, see you later, guys. Okay. Yeah, chaps. Right, lean over. Ugh.
Oh, where are my chaps? Come on, then. But there's no time for clowning around in the Dark Riders' bill bay. Coxie and Steve are tearing into that lorry. And there's more good news from out on the heap. Hi, Coxie. I think we found a, a pair of axles that are matching, one steering. They look like ex-military. Oh, that sounds bad. One grubbo. Get them back here as soon as possible. We can... Uh... So just finalise exactly what we're going to do with it. <laughs> you OK? Yep. That's her then, Bob. That's it. Next door, the Rusty Regiment are finally off the blocks for their first piece of scrap. Let's have two spanners, have them off. Have, the inlet, have that off out of the way, because that's only going to be in our way. Okay. See if I can find a bigger screwdriver. Just want a hacksaw, Bob. Yeah. That huge V8 gets the thumbs up from Expert Turbo, but it's not much use without a chassis. That forklift's been missing in action all morning. With their crucial components sorted, Turbo winds up for some hard graft, while armchair general Bob settles back, yeah. content to watch an expert at work. <laughs> the Dark Riders are spoilt for choice on the axle front thanks to their super quick scavengers, and Steve's already picked out a favourite. Well, this is Russian. How do you know it's Russian? I can tell by the wheel nuts. Yeah. It's a Russian zero. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's definitely Russian. This beefy Cold War relic is just the ticket because it's got a drive input, which means it can be powered as well as steered. It's the perfect replacement for the standard steering-only axle on their lorry. So it's going anti to go forward, and that's what yeah. we want. Right. So with both teams getting stuck into their scrap, it's time to meet a man who's no mug when it comes to tugs. Watching over this week's challenge is a stalwart employee of Douglas Equipment world-leading manufacturers of aircraft tugs. An industry insider who knows all about this week's three T's, traction, torque and towing. He's the perfect man to tell us if our teams are on track. He's Mike Doan. Welcome to Scrap Heap, Mike. Very nice thank to you have you here. Thank Rob. you very much for coming, because, you know, we don't really know what we're doing here, <laughs> as you may have guessed. <laughs> the first question really is, what, what is the absolute key ingredient that the teams need to get in order to pull a, a jumbo jet? The important thing is to develop traction, to have your, your engine power, your drive line, your gear ratio such that you can get the pull you require, but to develop that pull you need weight over the drive wheels. Yeah. And we're talking about pulling a, a 747 that uh, weighs about 150 tonnes, so we, as a rule of thumb to actually unstick and move the aircraft you actually need um, about 4% of the aircraft's weight. Right. And allowing for wet ground conditions with the weather we have at the yes. moment, they're going to need a vehicle that has at least 10 tonnes over the drive axle. Right. But one of the other crucial ingredients is actually making the wheels turn. You basically want the wheels turning slowly, but with enormous force. More force, that's yes. right. And Rob's hit the nail on the head. Turning force, or torque, is the key to success in this week's challenge. A gearbox allows you to control the amount of torque transmitted from the engine to the wheels. The lower the gear selected, the greater the torque, which is why you choose a low gear when you're towing or going up a hill. But massive torque is no good without traction. So both teams will need plenty of heavy ballast if they're going to have any chance of towing that humongous jumbo jet. So the Dark Riders are using a back axle as a drive shaft, from, from what I can gather. That's right, they're going for a four-wheel drive machine and spreading the weight of the vehicle, the 10 or 12 tonnes that they need, over the two drive axles. You've then got to get the drive to both of those axles, either with a drop box or transfer box. They're going to uh, use a, um, an axle that has an added advantage in so much that they've got an interaxle differential. So they're actually using that axle then as the transfer box, as that's how they get the power to the Indeed. front Indeed, that will split the power between the two axles, yes. Right. yes, yes. right. That's, that's uh, a good, good idea, idea isn't very it? good yeah. idea, yes, yes. I think it's a first, yeah. I don't think we've ever seen yeah, that. Yeah, excellent idea, yeah. Then over on the other side with the, the Rusty Regiment, they're using the forklift, which presumably was designed and built to yeah, want that, to carry a lot of load and to go move quite slowly. That gives them a, um, a more robust chassis. Um, having said that, it's quite a small forklift. They're putting a much bigger engine in, yeah. it, but it's only two-wheel drive, so they've got to get all of that 10 or 12 tonnes onto that one drive axle, right. actually. So they've got a bit of a task on the small vehicle and they're trying to put a very big engine into a, into a very small chassis yeah. there. Now, we are used to setting our teams fairly challenging tasks, but we've never asked them to pull 150 tonnes along with what That's a big weight. <laughs> Do you think we're asking too much? 
No, I think they've, they've got the possibilities of doing it. How fast they're going to be able to pull that aircraft is, a, is another matter, yes. actually. And now, if you had to move a 747 in a bit of a hurry, and you only had these machines to choose from, <laughs> which one would you choose? I think I would probably go with the dark riders at the moment, right. and uh, on the basis that they've got four-wheel drive, they can spread that ballast weight out over a much bigger vehicle, actually. Yeah. And it looks as though our judge has his money on the right team because Grobbo and Tony have done it again. What you got there, lads? A box? Yeah, that's looking better. Yeah. We'll do well to break that. He's one to one as well, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. A bit of ballast as well. <laughs> yeah, that's that way. Yeah, we'll go for that. He's a bit big. This beefy 90 degree box completes their 4x4 jigsaw. It's a dream scavenge for the Dark Riders. That's what I do. But it's a different story next door. You know, we have got a slight problem. The Rusty Regiment thought that ancient forklift would be a perfect home for their V8, making their build a breeze. They may have measured the forklift widthways, but there's no way that V8's going to fit lengthways. No, 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 because I know you, you won't be able to be fitting the Expert engine. Turbo has a drastic solution. If we could chop the tank. Well, if you, if you come forward to this line here. No, 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 because you cut it off here, you're going to be in, everyone's going to want to be in the same space. You won't go for a chop the tank, do you? I think that's the easiest way. Your call. You've got to work it. After their slow scavenge, a massive cut and shut job is the last thing the lads need. The regiment will have to pull out all the stops if they're going to catch their opponents. After an excellent morning scavenge, all four dark riders are determined to tear through their task list. First up, they are getting rid of the front steering-only axle, which is no good for their 4x4 plan. They'll replace it with this meaty Russian-driven axle. Look at that, eh? You yeah. done, have you done this before? I have never, ever in my life turned this one car going through a four-wheel drive. <laughs> what, you don't lift him off a jack? You want a bar, don't you? Huh? Can you use a bar? I could use a pint. <laughs> If we make it solid now... Yeah, let's rinse it up. Let's make it solid. Put a piece of box in there, angle down here, angle up there. Triangle it same up the other side. Doing that. Put the steering arm on. Expert <laughs> Steve makes it sound easy, but it's a massive job. A nominated welder Tony is going to have to keep his wits about him. <laughs> Next door, the Rusty Regiment's forklift is still in one piece. But not for long if Scavenger Paul has his way. Right, let's go for it. Do you want to get around the other side and do that, yeah? I can't do twos. I reckon that'll fit on there. I think that will. The team's next big job is to connect that mighty V8 to the forklift's drive axle. Well, I'm going to need to let it turn now. This single coupling will have to withstand the torque required to pull the jumbo jet. Let's offer him up, yeah? It's a bit looser, isn't it? Do you think that's going to work? I think that'll take the drive, for the amount of time we want it to take the drive. We're going to lay down some chunky old torque, though, aren't we? With the forklift in half, that engine coupling is holding them up. Fortunately, Turbo didn't get his nickname by accident. Chuck. Chuck. We know that goes in the gearbox. We know that boat's on those four boats there. Get that squared up on there and weld that on there, yeah? Yeah. Back over in the Dark Riders' bill bay, Tony's still getting down and dirty with the front axle. But their third axle's refusing to play ball. It's spent years out on the heap and it's rusted solid. That's what it is. You leave that there, it gives me a bit of leverage then. All right, you ready, Tony? They've got to free that axle up because it's the central part of their complex 4x4 plan. It says to me it's stuck or something. The power from the Dark Rider's engine takes a torturous route to get to the wheels. The lorry's gearbox oh. is connected to a 90-degree box, which in turn is coupled to an axle-mounted lengthways. The axle's differential then splits the power to the front and rear wheels, giving them four-wheel drive and a lower gear ratio. In theory, it's a brilliant plan. But add a 155-ton jumbo into the equation, and each connection is a potential breaking point.
Rusty Regiment, Dark Riders, you have five hours remaining today. Oh, five, five hours, hours. time remaining, halfway through, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's crack on, eh, lads? <laughs> the Dark Riders' day is going rapidly downhill. So, Mike, there's been a lot of activity, but there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of change. I mean, they're big, complicated builds, aren't they? They, they are, and they, they seem to basically be sticking to their original ideas. Yeah. Um, the regiment, however, early on, they, they were concerned as to whether there was enough room in the chassis of the forklift truck to fit the, the bigger engine. Yeah. So they've cut the chassis. They've got some rather large box section right. to lengthen the chassis. They've had a, a little bit of trouble sort of sorting out the spline drive. Um, they've done quite a bit of welding on it, so the, the weld is going to be crucial. Now, that's yeah. really got to stand up and take the tour. But they yeah. seem to have that sorted. Right. It's looking good on the right. at the moment, right. yeah. But and they seem to have caught up a little bit now. Occasionally, it seems there's one or two members of the team not fully occupied. Check in particular. I mean, I think if he took one hand out of his pocket, you know, they would <laughs> double their workflow, wouldn't they? Absolutely. <laughs> Well, on the other side, the Dark Riders, they're all working. Very yeah, I think they've, they've had a few problems. I mean, they've got the drive steer axle at the front. They're taking out the old conventional steer axle. Yeah. They've had some trouble with the third axle. That was seized, but they've, oh, managed, they've managed to free right. that. They're now trying to decide where they're going to put the, the right-angle drive. That does seem like far the more complicated build. I mean, in, there's a, yes, that's right. In terms of the actual vehicles themselves, I mean, have you, has your opinion changed now about their efficacy? The gear reduction is going to be critical in, right. in all of this. Uh, and getting that that weight for traction is going to be be very important. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm still sticking with the Dark Riders. With the Dark Riders. Mm -hmm. Our judge may rate the Dark Riders 4x4 design, but then he hasn't got to build it. Captain Coxie's only just started on that freshly freed third axle. Grobo's got a plethora of prop shafts to contend with. And Tony's still wrestling with that front axle. At some stage, we're going to have to chop, chop some off back of here. Well, right, I, can't so see, I can't see it being an advantage, keeping all this no, length. No. The team want to mount their tow point as close as they can to the rear axle. So they've decided the back of the lorry is surplus to requirements. Those electrics kind of just chop straight through them. Yeah, we don't need, we don't need the length. No. So I don't see the point in keeping it, really. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby does. I mean, I have a bobtailed cargo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh look cargo. at that. Yeah. Oh, it's, gr it's big and grubby. Big and oh, yeah. It's big, big and, and dirty. dirty. There's a lot to do, isn't there, guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've never done anything of this scale, pulling that much weight. No. The weakest part is obviously the prop shafts and the axles. Yeah. Because we're putting four times the power through them. And then you've got the clutch problem. Yeah. You? Does the clutch work? Because you don't know what kind no. of state that's in. No. I mean, presumably no. it's done quite a lot of work. Probably. And it's a little bit worn, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of calculations on the board. I mean, have you done any kind of the maths to do with the gear reduction you've got there? The, uh, oh, yeah, the drag room. coefficient and the traction and everything else. Yeah, we've worked it all out. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Next door, it's the moment of truth for the Rusty Regiment. I think that'll be too old. They may only have one drive connection to worry about, but their entire challenge depends upon it. We've got about two inches this side. No, right. you're going to have to go down a tad. Down a, down a tad, yeah. Right. Gently in. Just touch. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa. That's it, we're in. The couplings are perfect fit. Yeah? Yeah. All they have to do now is to get the chassis welded back around the engine. You want to leave a little bit of weight under there. If we have two axle stands and put under here. Once again, the Rusty Regiment's keep it simple approach has paid off. Rusty Regiment. Hey. Hello. I'm assuming you're going to join the two halves together again. Yes. We're just about to do it now. Paul, is he welding up to it? Yeah. Are you white? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what have we got to do? We've got to put, put the, the back two end on. ends back together. Yeah. Some seats, connect up the throttle, the gear linkage and the clutch. We may have some brakes. Do you think uh, brakes are going to be necessary? We'll throw a jumbo jet out the back. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping their lorry is of no concern to the dark riders. They're far more worried about getting it moving in the first place. 
How, how are you doing? Are we nearly done? Yeah, I'm just waiting for that other end. I'm ready now. All right, yeah. But I think you're going to have to tack it on, because we got to get this axle in yeah. there. And no Steve's problem. right to be concerned. A calling all Scrappy Challenge finalists. This is your two-hour call. Two hours, two hours built up already. Thank you, team. Time's gone. I wanted that in by two hours to go. I know. Really? Yeah. There's an hour's work fitting that on its own. Yeah. With no time left to beef up hub connections, they've got to stick the axle in and hope for the best. The Dark Riders have lost their early lead. Next door, one-man welding band Paul's got half of the forklift solid. If only his teammates were working as hard. How you doing, Jack? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, what's up? Can I, can I tell you tomorrow morning? What's up, mate? What's the problem? I'm waiting for my second wind to kick in. Oh, yeah, Since I about had that. 9 o'clock this morning. I had that. <laughs> right, you boys better not take offence to what I'm going to say. But we have got to get our backsides in gear because this bit of box has got to be on there now. It should have been on there ages ago. We've got to get it up in the air. We've got to see which direction we're going. We've got to get the hitch on. Right. Yeah? Yeah. So let's really just put it up there and weld it on. It yeah. ain't got to be pretty. It ain't got to yeah. be great. Drop it down the one. I know you're not doing it on purpose, but this is hurting my back. They may have the simpler build, but the team can't afford to take their eye off the ball. OK, boys, relax. I'm pretty sure that hole there. And with that forklift finally whole again, Turbo's keen to work out which way the engine turns in relation to the wheels. That's backwards. That should be a Ford gear. That's it. Hitches on that end. Right out. So, get all your bits. Come on, get your hands out of your pockets. Christ's sake. Let's get the stuff for the hitch and get motivated. Motivation hasn't been a problem next door, but the Dark Rider's intricate build has held them back. That third axle's only roughly in place, and there's a mass of drive connections that need sorting. And it soon becomes apparent there's a serious problem. We're struggling for our distances to get these props in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know it's a bit late in the day, but I think we're going to have to move our axle back. The Dark Riders have discovered there isn't enough room between the front and back axles for the third axle, which will send power to the wheels. <sighs> The obvious solution is to move the rear axle back on the chassis. But there's nowhere to move it to, because they chopped off the rear of the lorry to accommodate their tow hitch. Yeah, well, we've done too much work at the back now. We'd have to chop through the chassis. We want to move it back 12 inch, really. 12 inch, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to go for it. Let's make a decision. Right, let's, let's go do it. Let's have the gas. Extending their chassis is a drastic solution at well, such we'll a late stage. There, uh, teams, the day is drawing to a close. You have one hour oh. remaining today. One hour, one hour. remaining. Thank you. We're going to struggle to get this done in an hour. It's time for the lads to show some northern grit and cut, shut and weld like never before. Mike, it seems to me that the, the evolving story is the Rusty Regiment come up with what looks like quite a reasonable machine, isn't it? They've really moved along now and they've uh, lengthened the chassis, as we said earlier. They've been able to drop the engine right into the chassis, so they've now got a direct link to the drive axle. Yeah. Still leaves them short on, on ratio and torque, I think. They've obviously got to put the driving station in, but other than that, I think they're, uh, they're, they're well ahead now. Yeah. I mean, the blow hose in it. I did. Right, weld it up a bit more half sensible then. Because what's happened next door, you know, well, suddenly the dark right. Well, what they've done there, there is that they've put in the, the third axle action is, is the transfer box, but they've somehow neglected to consider how long a prop shaft they're going to need between that third axle and the rear drive axle. Yeah. So they've now got to try and fiddle in somehow a drive shaft to that all-important rear drive axle. Yeah. They just couldn't move the axle back on the chassis, so it was a case of cutting it and, 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 and trying to lengthen the chassis. This is in the, the really the final hour of the build, and it is the indeed. last thing they need yes, is a big crisis like that. Indeed, so they, yes. So they've really got to move now to, to solve yeah. that problem. Yeah. 
As darkness falls over the heap, both teams are pulling out all the stops to get their aircraft tugs ready for action. But it's the dark riders who've got it all to do. They're blitzing that chassis extension with two welders going flat out. But they still need to get that third axle connected and get their tow bar sorted. Next door, it looks like Turbo Sergeant Major Act has paid off. The Rusty Regiment are finally working together as a team. With their controls completed and the radiator just going in, the end is in sight. Something's happened in the Rusty Regiment build area. I don't know what it is. I think it's some sort of bizarre chemical reaction because suddenly there's this galvanised, hard-working team. It might Stop be Turbo's twittering. influence. Stop twittering. Stop twittering, do more stuff. Yes, I know. The epiphany of Turbo. Yeah. They've built an amazing machine. It's nearly finished. No. All they've got to do is put the tow hitch on. Well, I wish the same could be said of the Dark Riders. I mean, the most basic textbook area of getting an incorrect tape measure measurement. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, good job getting there. Yeah, get there. Two braces in there now, and then we're done. And it's not one of the really complicated measurements that you need long sums with brackets on. It's, it's like from there to there. Yeah. I've got to move on with the draw bar hitch now. Yeah. So I can, can I leave, you, leave that to you now? Yeah. That should fit now, and it's cool. Well, I mean, it sounds like the Rusty Regiment are trying their engine. I mean, it is bizarre how they turned round in the last few hours. Got any marshmallows? <laughs> Give it some. That V8 throaty roar is the icing on the cake for the Rusty Regiment, who once again pulled it together in the last hours of the build. Next door, the Dark Riders may be done in, but at least that last coupling's done up. But such a frantic finish means they'll have a very busy tinker time. Oh, well over the odds, yeah, I think yeah, so. Absolutely. Let's give them the gong. Oh. OK, teams, your ten hours are up, and it's time for your plane pullers to head for the departure lounge. Bring it on. Let's hope your machines will have the muscle for tomorrow's jumbo test. Hey. Well done, team. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> The challenge is superficially simple. They must pull this 155 tonne jumbo jet from a standing start down 200 metres of runway to the finish line. The team with the fastest time will be the winners of the Scrap Heap Challenge final. But before battle commences, our finalists are making full use of the traditional tinker time. Aside from the usual fiddling and fettling, both teams need to add the tons and tons of ballast that they've hand-picked from our heap. I was very worried about the Dark Riders last night, particularly the problems they were having with their prop shafts and everything. And now I've seen this, it makes me even more worried. Well, with the, with the Dark Riders, yes, they had the problem with the prop shaft, they've lengthened the chassis. They've certainly got the, the, the gear reduction to get, get the torque, I think. Because they've got a, a, a relatively small engine, then their problem is, I think, once they move the aircraft, um, is, to, to, is to get the speed. Right. If we look at the Rusty yeah. Regiment, um, they've gone the other way. I mean, they were able to drop the engine straight in a direct couple, so there was no transfer box at the end of the day. But if they can develop the traction and get the aircraft moving, then they've got the more powerful engine. Right. And so they've got a chance of towing it at a higher speed. So but it's all about getting that aircraft moving initially. Yeah. Now, I suppose unlike a lot of challenges we do on Scrappy, where often the machine will start and then break, this one is very much to do with all the strain, all the pressures in the, that first few seconds when they try and heave this huge monster along. Exactly. If we look at the, um, at the Dark Riders, the big concern there is, is all those prop shafts that they've yeah. welded together. They've got to take that torque and whether or not they are man enough for the, for the job. They have gone for a four-wheel drive machine, yeah. so they've got a, a little bit better chance there compared to the two-wheel drive machine of, yeah. the, of the Rusty Regiment. But having said that, they both split and welded their chassis, and if the chassis break, then we could see front half of the vehicles driving down the, the runway here and the aircraft left behind. <laughs> The whole thing could be a total disaster. It could be interesting. Yeah. It could be interesting, yeah. <laughs> As the tension mounts, the first team to face the music are the Dark Riders. After countless hours of graft, it all comes down to this. One run, one chance. Will their tug take the strain? The unbreak off, Tony. Yeah, unbreak Dark on. Riders, this is the Scrap Heap Challenge final. On the sound of my horn, pull your plane! <laughs> Death 
definitely moving. That is the difficult thing, was going to be getting it moving in the first place. And it's moving. Come on, guys. And that's accelerating quite nicely. Touch right up. Let the touch right up. Top two. That's it. Just get to a nice cruising speed. Look at that baby go. Whoa. Go. That is incredible. Yeah, that is nothing and is it, broken. No, and it's faster than I thought it, it would is. be. It's actually. actually going a bit. Yeah, you can really see yeah. it moving. Yeah. yeah. Woo yeah. Come on, slowly increase it. <laughs> so that is probably as fast as they can go now. But I mean, that's a very decent speed. Yeah, it is a decent speed. Pretty impressive, I have to say. 155 tonnes of jumbo jet being pulled by a machine built on a scrap heap. I'm impressed. We're going to do this! So they obviously have enough weight on for traction. Yeah. They've certainly got the torque there and the and the gear reduction. Very impressive. Very impressive indeed, yeah. Because they've got no brakes, so we're just hoping it will stop. <laughs> Dark Riders, you've got to be pleased with that. Oh, Please magic. That one. Brilliant. That'll Please do that one. That'll do. That was exactly what you were looking for, wasn't That's it? That's what yeah. we wanted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly what we were supposed to do. Six gear, smoother. that. <laughs> How fast do you think you went? Well, well three, three mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> In our first run of the day, the Dark Riders gave it their best shot, setting a blistering time of 1 minute 34 seconds. But have they done enough to win the Scrap Heap Challenge final? Rusty regiment. Any nerves there, Captain Bob? A little bit, but we're confident. You are brimming with confidence. That's what we like to see. Turbo? Well, I think there's a fair chance. It's a nice colour green, isn't it? It's a beautiful green. It's looking fantastic. You're all hooked up. Do your very best. It's I'll see you It's going to sound after. very noisy. It's going to sound noisy. Do you think you'll be able to cope with that, Paul? Oh, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, you got your earplugs. <laughs> nice one, guys. You only get one shot at this, so give it your very best one. I'll see Thank you afterwards. You. Well done. Thank you. This is it. The Series 10 Champions Cup hangs in the balance. Can the Rusty Regiment pull it off? Rusty Regiment, go on the sound of my horn. It's a slow and steady start for the regiment. They can't risk breaking that coupling or their clutch. Yes. Well done. They're underway. With that enormous plane on the move, it's time to give it some real welly. Yeah. yeah, and it's quite smooth as well. Very smooth. Yeah. Their ancient V8's working harder than it's ever worked before. And the rusty regiment crossed the line. We had our doubts about that engine, but that smokescreen was hiding some serious V8 firepower. But will it be enough to beat the Dark Riders? Teams, well done. It was incredibly close. In the end, there were only 17 seconds in it. But the winners of the 2007 10th Series Scrap Heap Challenge final are the Rusty Regiment! Yes! yes! Check! Go on, let's go for it! So it's a fond farewell to the Dark Riders. They've built some amazing machines and will have made their biker brethren proud. But they couldn't quite do enough to beat our new champions, the Rusty Regiment, whose succession of brilliant bulletproof designs has earned them a well-deserved place in the Scrap Heap Challenge record books. And don't forget to join us again next week when the Rusty Regiment will be taking on last year's winners, Wolf Justice, in the most physical challenge of the year. We'll see you then. That's right, our teams must build human-powered machines that can traverse surf and turf. It promises to be an adrenaline-fueled battle for the ultimate prize.